God, Brother Bernardini, if you'd come. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Yes, amen. Praise God. Well, it wasn't too awfully long ago that we were here in Bria, Kentucky, standing behind this pulpit in this house. Right preaching to you, and prophesying as the Holy Ghost moved on us. Yes, and I'm just glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. Why don't we stand to our feet and let's lift our hands and let's just give God some praise before we go any further right now. Hallelujah. Come on. That's it. Lift your voice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, come on. That's it. Lift your voice to him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Talked to Brother Peaver on the phone this afternoon, and he stressed to me that he desired to be here, but explained to me the situation. Please keep your pastor in your prayers. We want to see a speedy recovery and a complete healing and his life, and I believe the Lord's doing that. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Mark chapter 2, starting with verse 1, reading down to verse 12. How many's ready for the word of the Lord tonight? Feel a direction in the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to do what I feel. Is that all right? Can I just do what I feel? I feel like we've come to let the Holy Ghost have free reign and free course in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Feel that this word that I've got tonight in my spirit, I want to portray it to you. I feel like it's for somebody here tonight. It's great to see my friend, Brother Josh Hampton. They came to uh, Brother Naylor's while we were in revival there, dropped in, surprised us. We had a Tremendous move of the Holy Ghost each and every service there at Brother Naylor's. I uh, believe we had a total of 12 that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Only four, four of those were backsliders. The rest were first-time people that received the Holy Ghost. And we had three that were baptized in the name of Jesus. We had many healings and many miracles. And I'm just thankful for what the Lord is, is doing around here. Amen. Praise God. I believe that the Lord's wanting to do what he said he's going to do in his word, pouring out his spirit upon all flesh in the last days. I believe the Lord is doing just that. Mark chapter 2, starting with verse 1, when you're there, say amen. If your neighbor's so hateful they will not allow you to read along with them, bring them up to the front. We'll pray for them real quick. Bible reads, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Verse 3, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was bore forth. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Verse 8 reads, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason these things in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, go thy way into thy house. In verse 12 in conclusion, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, and so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. I want to preach tonight on the title, 
created faith. Created faith. Hallelujah. Can you put your Bibles down? Can I get a little more monitor, please? And can we just lift our hands to the Lord right now? And let's just begin to lift our voice to Him and magnify Him. Let's ask Him for a move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, that's it. Let's ask Him for a move and a visitation of the supernatural. Lord, we come before You. I'm asking that You will move mightily tonight. I'm praying, Lord, that You will undertake and have Your way. Let Your will and purpose be fulfilled in this house. I pray, God, that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Do a divine work in this place tonight, God. We've come to believe for miracles and signs and wonders. I've come to believe, God, that you're going to do great exploits before the conclusion of this service. I pray, Lord, that you will touch from the back to the front, from right to left, from top, from bottom, from center to circumference. God, I pray for a visitation of the supernatural. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, can you just clap your hands and lift your voice to him right now? Come on, that's you clap your hands with power and begin to lift your voice to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I can truly say that it is not a wrong statement to say that the devil is trying with all of the power that he has to stop you. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's right. I can truly say that it is not a wrong statement to say that the devil is trying with all of the power that he has to stop this church. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's right. You see, the devil would love to get some of you on your deathbed with sickness. The devil would love to kill some of you in a car wreck. The devil would love for some of you to get bitter against the church and get to the place where you would backslide. The devil would love to see some of you get to the position where you would not serve the Lord anymore. For we all know each and every one of us is on the hit list of hell. And the devil is trying to destroy us. The Bible says that he is walking around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So in order to make him look more powerful, he attacks in various areas. I can remember taking a trip when I was in Texas Bible College. and uh, we, we took a trip, some of my friends and myself, and we went up to Minden, Louisiana, and we spent some time with Brother T.W. Barnes. And How many knows who Brother T.W. Barnes was? For those of you that do not, he was a great prophet in our organization in the United Pentecostal Church. He went on to meet the Lord here some time back. But as we were there and we were talking with uh, Brother T.W. Barnes, he said, boys, he said, if you don't get anything out of this whole time that you're up here talking to me, he said, I want you to get this. He said, the Lord has given us some very powerful weapons to fight the devil with. He said, first of all, he's given us his name. And that name is the name of Jesus. He said, second, he's given us the blood, which he shed on Calvary. He said, third, he's given us the word. He said, fourth, he's given us the Holy Ghost. And he said, last but not least, he's given us some old-fashioned faith. And Brother Barnes looked across the desk with a twinkle in his eye, and he said, boys, he said, when you fight the devil with these, he said, the devil ain't got a dog's chance. I've come to tell you here in Berea, Kentucky, it's time to start fighting the devil with the name. I don't think some of you are hearing me. I said, we got to start fighting the devil with the blood. We need to start coming against him with the word of God and with the Holy Ghost that we have and with some old-fashioned faith because when we fight the devil with these, honey, the devil ain't got a dog's chance. I've come to tell you that the church is launching out into one of the greatest revivals that this world will ever witness. I've come to tell you the devil is going down. I said the devil is going down. I said the devil is going down and the church is stepping into great revival. So what the devil does is he attacks your faith in the name because he is trying to dilute your faith any way possible simply because he knows that you cannot create or have faith in something that you do not believe in. And he knows that there is power in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? He knows that there is strength in the name of Jesus. 
So he's trying to get you to the place where you just say it and you do not believe in it. Because if he knows that he can get you to that place that he has stopped your created faith in the name of Jesus, that he has won a very major victory. That's why there are a lot of people that call upon the name of Jesus and absolutely nothing happens. That's why there are a lot of religions that call upon the name of Jesus and absolutely nothing happens. That's why there are even a lot of preachers that call upon the name of Jesus and absolutely nothing happens because they have just repeated a word. They have just uttered a noun. The devil has killed their faith in the name. Therefore, there is no power present. They did not say it as the working power in their life. So tonight, for the next few moments, I'd like to preach on this subject of created faith. You see, if you are falsely accused of committing a crime, you're going to want to go out and get the best lawyer with the biggest law firm. You're probably going to go around town and ask, ask everybody else who they think is the best. You're probably going to want to get the one that's won the most cases uh, because you want to be able to have faith in that lawyer to get you out of the situation that you have been falsely accused of. And it would be hard to create faith in a lawyer that's never won any cases or has been out of practice for so many years. If you're here tonight and you've got a heart problem or a tumor in your brain or a serious injury in your foot, you're going to want to go out and get the best heart doctor, the best brain surgeon, the best foot specialist to do the operation on you because you will not be able to create faith in someone or something that is not the best at what they do. Because during the operation, you're going to want to be able to sit back and relax and have faith in that surgeon that is going to be cutting on you. You see, creative faith is always there, but you got to tap into it. Created faith is always looking past or beyond the present moment. Turn to your neighbor and say the present moment. You might be saying, well, I've got bad health at the present moment. I've got cancer at the present moment. I've got sickness at the present moment. I've got depression at the present moment. I'm always so sick, i got to call upon the pastor every day to come and pray for me. I can barely make it to church because I stumped my big toe and I'm just going to have to skip out. You see, creative faith is not worried about the present moment because it knows that this is not the end of it. It knows I may not feel good right now at the present moment but I'm fixing to feel good in a little while I may be sick at the present moment but honey that's about to change I may have problems at the present moment but I'm about to step out of my problems I may have this at the present moment but I'm fixing to get my miracle come on there's some of you under the sound of my voice you need to start creating the faith that it takes for God to give you your miracle you need to start creating the faith that it takes for God God to deliver you or heal your body. Come on, you've got to start creating faith in the house. Oh, lift your hands and begin to praise him right now. You see, please allow me to do what Paul did in his day and age. He referred to the Colosseums of his day and age. There are a lot of examples of creative faith. I want to explain to you this phenomena called creative faith. Creative faith, believe it or not, is involved in the sports world. It's really centered in towards the sports figure. If someone were to walk into the game of baseball and walk into the Coliseum in times past by, and sit down among the crowd and and watch this man that used to play the game, Babe Ruth, one of the greatest home run hitters of all time, walk into the Coliseum and, and he is there and sit down among the crowd. Old Marky Mark's there and he's sitting right next to old Claude Lewis. And Marky Mark says, you know, I don't think the Babe's going to hit one today at all. And then old Claude can look over at Marky Mark and he can say, well, what in the world did you come for? Because that's what we came for. We came to see the babe hit one out of the park. Because if you don't think he is going to hit one, then why did you show up? Why did you take off work? Why did you get all dressed up? Why did you pay for the ticket? And why in the world are you even here? 
And then Claude can look over at Marky Mark and say, well, I came. I bought the same ticket that you did. I got dressed up just like you simply because not only do I think he's going to hit one, but I believe he's going to hit a home run right here so I can catch the baseball. I can get the baseball signed and take the baseball home and show my grandkids that I sat in the right seat at the right time and I got exactly what I came for. I come to ask some of you Pentecostals tonight. What in the world did you come for? Oh, I don't think some of you heard me. I said, what in the world did you come for? Could it be that if you're sitting in the right seat and it's the right time and you take a step of faith, God's about to pour out his spirit in just a minute. Honey, you're going to get a miracle. You're going to get a blessing. You're going to get a healing. Come on, it's time to start creating the faith that it takes for a move of the Holy Ghost. It's time to start creating the faith that it takes for a demonstration of his power. Oh, come on, that's it. lift your hands and begin to praise him right now. Come on, begin to magnify him in this house. Come on, throw your hands up. Begin to lift your voice. Some people have so much faith. I don't know if you've ever thought of it that they bring a ball glove with them. Have you ever thought about it? Little kids do it, running all around with a ball glove, thinking, man, we're fixing to catch a home run. Older men do it, walking in the place with their shoulders square back, their ball glove. I've even seen grannies do it, rolling the grannies in in the wheelchairs, and they got their ball glove. Everybody does it. What in the world are you coming for? I'm fixing to catch a home run. Where are you going, Claude? Well, I'm going to go over to the left field side. I'm going to sit in about the fourth or the fifth row because you see the babe, he's been hitting them out about 316, 324. He's a power hitter. He's been putting them up there in the bleachers. And I figured out if I sit in the third section at about three or four feet to every seat, that's going to put me up there about 316, 324. And I can always reach my hand up a little bit and jump up and down. And, and I can always, you know, run down and jump down a few seats. And I can always run to the right or run to the left. How did you know that the fourth row was 316 or 324? It's because before the game, Claude got a map of the Coliseum and he sat down and he figured it all out. I'm not going to sit on that other side in the dead section because I want the ball. I'm fixing to catch me a home run. And I'm thinking he's going to be hitting where he's always been hit. Uh, honey, you can sit on the right side in the dead section if you want to, but I'm fixing to catch me a baseball. Come on, some of you need to start walking into church uh, and picking out which seat you think God's going to move on. Uh, every time you come to the house of God, you need to create uh, and build up the faith uh, for the move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm talking about praising God. And when the praises go up, the glory comes down. I'm talking about clapping your hands and taking a step of faith and moving into a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I think it would be so sad to walk into a place where absolutely nothing happens. To walk into a stadium where you knew your team was going to lose. Have you ever noticed in the sports world, when someone's team quits winning, they quit going? I believe it was the New Orleans Saints here a few years back. They started losing so bad. It was in the newspapers. The front headlines. Fans wearing potato sacks over their heads to the games. They cut out some places in the eye so they could see what wasn't happening. They cut out some places in the mouth. It was the headline, struck page. So all the fans could go, boo. Why? Because the saints weren't winning. It would have been hard for me to understand the mentality of Babe Ruth being the home runner that he, or the home run hitter that he was, if he were to walk up to the plate and look at the pitcher and say, all right, pitcher, just pitch him in here. I'm going to strike out. In fact, I, I just want you to just, you know, just roll them in here like you're bowling, you know. Throw them in here. It, it don't matter. I'm going to strike out. 
Strike one. I'm going to swing at this one, but, but I'm not going to hit it. Strike two. Told you. In fact, let me go ahead and tell you, I'm not going to hit a home run this year at all. Strike three. All right. I'm out. Now let me go back and talk to my owner and my manager about my $7 million contract and get that going. <laughs> Who's ever writing that check is going to be like, whoa, hold on just a minute. Me and you need to talk. You see, I don't think you understand a few things. You see, we signed you up to hit home runs. We signed you up to play on this team because we want to win ball games. We signed you up because, you see, we're going to do a work and we're going to win this year. You see, my name is out there. You're not looking as ignorant as me because, you see, I'm the one that's paying you. And everybody knows that my name is on your check. And you're not performing the way that my name says that you ought to perform. And if you're going to play on this team, then you don't go up there thinking that you're going to strike out. But you go up there saying, hey, I'm fixing to hit a home run. I'm fixing to hit it out of the park. Some of y'all getting the picture now? Come on, we need to stop coming into church and saying ain't nothing happening and ain't nothing going to happen. And we need to start creating the faith that it takes for something to happen because we've got power in the name of Jesus. I don't think some of you heard me. I need to say it again. I said we got power in the name of Jesus. We can cast out devils in the name of Jesus. We can heal the sick in the name of Jesus. We can do miracles in that name. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. So now we come to our text. It had spread throughout the whole town that Jesus was in Capernaum. Jesus had already been working miracles and his fame had spread throughout the whole region round about Galilee. It doesn't say whose house that it was, but it says that many were gathered there to hear him teach the word. Many probably thought, well, he has come to work miracles among us. He has come to heal. He has come to cast out devils. I cannot begin to imagine how it started with the one that was sick of the palsy. No evidence at the present moment, but hoping for something to happen. And when they got to the house, they saw that there was no way in and they could have easily went around. They could have easily went home. It was a good place for doubt and unbelief to begin to step into the picture. But faith is creating in your mind the steps to a miracle. You may not have physical evidence at the present moment, but when you form in your mind what could happen and how to get to Jesus, it's called creative faith. There are some of you that have come into this house needing a miracle tonight. There are some that have come needing a healing in your body. There are some that have come needing deliverance in your life from addictions and things that have you bound. Whatever it might be, it's time to start creating the steps in your mind to your miracle because if you can get to where Jesus is honey there's a guaranteed promise that something's going to happen if you can get to where Jesus is honey you're going to get a miracle if you can get to where Jesus is you're going to get deliverance if you can get to where the Lord's at you're going to get a blessing before you go home What they did was, was they created a way to get around the obstacle that was standing in their way for a miracle. Verse 4 says, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where in the sick of the palsy lay. You see, sometimes people will hinder you quicker from getting your blessing than anything. I need to say that again. I don't think some of you caught that. Sometimes people will hinder you quicker from getting your blessing than anything. Have you ever noticed when a, 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 a doubter sits beside a praiser in church? <laughs> Honey, they fix to find another seat. I've been traveling now for seven years, and I love seeing, uh, getting up here on the platform and just looking out on the congregation. You can see everything from the platform. And I love to watch how people team up in church. I like to watch people, who they sit beside and, and, and you know, where they sit. And have you ever noticed how people team up? My God, man, I sat over there by them praisers last Sunday morning. Man, I, 
I, I've been scoping you out and I notice you, you don't do much. I'm going to move because, you see, they messed up my wife's Pentecostal tooth that she had been working on and she had just perfected it. And I bought this new suit the other day at the suit store. And this one guy, man, he started running around the church and he grabbed me. He thought that I was going to run with him and he ripped all the buttons off of my suit. And, man, I can't keep up with them praisers over there. But, honey, I've been watching you. I'm going to move to this dead section. But, you see, I got something else figured out, too. I didn't understand it at first but I understand it now you ain't praising you ain't worshiping you ain't shouting you ain't getting the service but honey you ain't getting blessed you ain't getting healed you ain't getting delivered you ain't having revival you ain't got a relationship with God but those people over there my God man they're busting through the roof they're uncovering the roof they're getting to where the Lord's at come on they're getting to where Jesus is and they're gonna get a blessing they're gonna get a miracle come on we need some people in this house tonight that'll start uncovering the roof. Come on, that's it. Get to where Jesus is and you're going to get a miracle. Come on, stand to your feet and throw your hands up and begin to lift your voice right now. Come on, lift your voice to him right now. He's Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Throw your hands up and begin to lift your voice. Come on, we need some people right now that'll make up in their mind. I've come wearing the garments of praise. I've come wearing the garments of worship. I've come to get into the presence of the Lord. God inhabits the praises of his people. When the praises go up, the glory comes down. I'm about to press through the doubt. I'm about to make my way through the crowd. I'm about to touch the hem of his garment. I'm about to uncover the shackles off of the roof to get to where he's at. Because if I can get to where he's at, I can get my blessing. I can get my healing. I can get my miracle. I've got to get in the presence of the Lord. Oh, come on. That's it. Begin to praise him. I can feel faith being created in this house right now. The man that was sick of the palsy, he was healed. Because in verse 5 it says, he saw their faith. Did you know when you start to create faith, Jesus will see it. When you start to create faith, Jesus will begin to focus in on you. Faith without works is dead. That's why some people can have faith, but they will never be healed. Because you have to put action and works with your faith. But when you begin to mix all of them ingredients, and you begin to take a step of faith, God will begin to touch you like you've never been touched. I just wonder, does anybody need a miracle tonight? I said, does anybody need a miracle tonight? Did you know you can come to the house of God and you can create a lot of things? You can come to the house of God and you can create an atmosphere of praise. You can come to the house of God and create an atmosphere of worship. There are some that even come, and I've been to churches that they can come and they can create confusion and chaos. But did you know that you can come to the house of God and you can create faith? You may not be able to see it with the natural eye and the physical eye, but you can create faith. And when you begin to take that step of faith, immediately, the attention of God 
begins to focus in on you. I just wonder, does anybody need a miracle tonight? If you need something from the Lord, I want you to step out. I want you to come right now. I want you to line up here at the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you need the Lord to do in your life, I want you right now to begin joining hands with the person standing next to you. Hook up with another believer right now. Join hands with another saint, with another believer. And whatever you need the Lord to do for you, I want you to begin to pray it right now and begin to believe. Come on, that's it. Begin to lift your voice. And after you pray and after you believe, I want you to take a step of faith. Envision yourself taking that step of faith. And I want you to begin to speak life to that dead situation. I want you to begin to speak life against that problem. Whatever it might be, the Bible says there is life and death in the power of the tongue. I want you to begin to declare and claim some things in the spirit. Come on, right now. I want you to begin to pray and begin to believe, begin to agree with a brother or sister right now and begin to speak life to that situation right now. Come on, that's it. Begin to lift your voice. Come on, that's it. Begin to believe it. Begin to claim it. Begin to receive it right now. Oh, come on, that's it. Create some faith in this house. Oh, that's it. Create some faith. Ah, that you'd create some faith right now. Do you have the faith to see it through? Sing, I believe it. I believe it. I stand on His promise. I receive it. And I. 